Hello everyone, Dan Julian here, nurse practitioner for Dan Aesthetics Medical, and our clinic is located here in Ottawa, Canada. Today I'm going to be answering everything you need to know about what happens to the upper cheek during the aging process and how we can restore it using dermal fillers. I'm also going to be answering that age-old question, do dermal fillers actually lift? Let's get into it. All right, so since we're talking about this part of the face, let's go over some essential anatomy and the aging process. First of all, the nose is all cartilage and there's a big hole there in the skull. And that hole starts opening up and starts retruding in on itself. Our face literally implodes on us and all our superficial fat pads, which are mobile, move towards where the skull is morphing to. This is why all of you come to me and say, Dan, can you do this? That's because that's where your fat pads used to be. That's number one. Number two, the superficial fat pads right here actually never lose volume. They actually swell over time. Not only that, underneath all of that, you have muscle and deep fat pads. The deep fat pads are fixed. They do not move. And those are the first fat pads that you tend to lose as we start maturing. You'll notice that right here. You're going to notice a little dip there. It's the first place on the face where we tend to lose fat. All right, now let's bring in Sarah to help us identify certain landmarks. She's done a really nice job of highlighting the superficial fat pads that are mobile. They swoop this way and they bunch over here. So I want to avoid putting dermal fillers there because I don't want it to swell. I don't really want it to drop. I want to place it in a fixed position, which is going to be my deep fat pads. Right over here, my median lateral soups. So that's what I'm looking for. Now, the whole idea is I know that I have some bunching right here, but let's say if I had a feminine cheek and I want to feminize this, what can I do? Well, I'm going to use certain landmarks. The first landmark is taking the tail of the eyebrow. I'm going to drop it straight down. Then I take the upper ala of the nose and I cross it with the upper tragus. And this is my first mark right here. I actually make an X right there on my client, right there. Now, that X, doesn't necessarily mean that I want to follow this exact path to the upper tragus. My client's zygomatic arch, which is the bone right here, might be higher than that. This is what I want to follow. I do not want to follow this path. This path is just identifying where X marks the spot. I really want to follow the zygomatic arch. This is the natural arch and this is really what I want to highlight. This is going to give the illusion of lift because I'm going from here to there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to intersect the medial part to the lateral part, which is right here. See that dip? That's the jugal groove. That's this right here. And this is caused by two things, loss of volume in the medial sooth, and also uh, because that ligament tends to tether everything down. It goes from the bone through all the tissues all the way up to the skin and pulls down on it. So if I can revolumize that and connect this heavier part all the way up here, then that's going to look seamless and natural. Then if I notice that they have also lost volume in the mid cheek, then I'm going to restore that here. I don't have any lost volume, so I don't need to do it, but a lot of people do. So in that case, I will also place a little bit there. And that sometimes can correct the tear trough by about 30% without even really doing anything. Then finally, what I want to do is maybe place a little bit just behind it to taper it off naturally. I don't want a drop. But I also don't want to bring it all the way back because that's going to hollow out my temples and my cheek. I just want this cheek nice and natural. So that's what I do. One, two, three, and four. But see that small X just, just because I'm just tapering it back oh so slightly. Now, since we're talking about the cheek, what about the hollowing that happens right here? Should you fill that? To be honest, that's going to be the decision of your client based on their personal preference. And if they choose to fill it, then I would do that either using a hyaluronic acid or a biostimulator. I would do that with a cannula just behind it, fanning it through. Now to get back to my question, do dermal fillers actually lift? When it comes down to the cheek, I truly believe that it actually doesn't. Remember, we have a little bit of bunching here and we've lost volume there and there. All I'm doing is connecting this to here, creating the illusion of lift. That said, there are certain areas on the face that might provide a little bit of lifting with dermal fillers, such as a tight temple that restored can maybe kick back the eyebrow a little bit on certain candidates. And also if you have a really tight tear trough and if you provide a little lifting there with a little filler, you might get a little bit of an improvement of the nasolabial folds. But definitely when it comes down to the cheek, 
it won't provide lift, it creates the illusion of lift. So landmarks are important. You just have to understand why and how to use them. But if you're a medical aesthetics provider and you're looking to increase your skills, consider checking out my Patreon. Otherwise, until the next time, take care of each other, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Cheers.